Hello, I'm Robert, and I've got all six programs running on the Mac now, and some of them are quite close to release. And the ones that are particularly close to release are Virtual Flower, Bounce Metronome is very close to release, and Tunesmithy Landomer, Nizajou 3D. Now the ones that are further away from release are Tunesmithy, and that's uh, mainly because it's a, it's a very major upgrade of, from Tunesmithy 3 and the same with Activity Timer. So it's not particularly a problem with porting it to the Mac, as that I actually have to do an update of those programs as well. The reason is because the older version of those programs uh, is, not going to, is not going to be easy to update to the Mac. So I'm going to show you Virtual Flower to start with, and just give you a quick introduction to the program. I'll do these as separate videos, I think, for each program. So I'll do one for Virtual Flower, one for Bounce Metronome, and so on. Just a short introduction to each one. So, if we have a look at Virtual Flower, then when you go to File, if you go to File and then to New, then you, this is what you'll get. Now, if you click at the top here, you get this kind of, it's like a kind of panel. And if you click there, it's got Change Branches, Change Stalks, like a control panel. Click here and you can move it around and see it from different angles. And if you click there, then you hide that. And then if you click up there again, it changes. It, it'll appear again. Click at top left and that panel appears again. And then if you do that, that lets you change the stalks. Notice how they all change at once, simultaneously on the tree. If I click and change branches, and all the branches change at once. If I click and drag with the right button, then the tree gets narrower very quickly. So if I go like that, it, it gets narrow much, it gets, the branches get smaller much more slowly. And then keep on dragging like that. And you can actually get it going like that as well. So in that way, you, you make these, just by clicking and dragging, you change the, the branches like that, and you change the entire tree. And because the angles work in the same way all the way up the tree, you get this kind of unified effect, just like you get with a real tree. And you, it, essentially it's a fractal pattern where a tiny detail looks very much like the whole thing because it grew up the same structure working all the way through it. If you go up to tree and then tree, then you can set the number of levels. So if you increase the number of levels, it looks quite a bit like a real tree, with quite a lot of levels for detail. However, if you do that, it could be quite hard to, to uh, it's going to time out, especially if you go to higher quality. Now I've set this to medium quality. I recommend that you use medium quality for complex shapes because the highest quality will be very slow and it might turn out. It might, there you are, it's timed out. So medium quality. This is, uh, what we're seeing at the moment is, this is a graphics engine that I wrote myself. So it's all being done in software. I did this ages ago. And it's not using the graphics card at all. At some point, I will update it so it uses OpenGL but it's not doing that at the moment. So if you want to show it with your graphics card, then go and output it. And output tree, forest, etc. And let's output it as a single tree because this is quite complex. Hopefully it'll be able to show it. Then go save and show, you'll get a warning. Does it exist? This is all right, I'm saying it's all right. And there you are, there's our tree. Now, if we go to navigation and jump to viewpoint, then we can look at it from close up. And there's our tree from close up. And yes, it's working quite nicely. Now if we go up here, back to virtual flower, then we can actually animate it. Go to animations, tree sway, trees rustle. Leaves rustle, let's set the whole thing animating. No, not, not grow, leaves rustle as well. Now let's see how that works. If 
we now output it. Output. Save and show. Now if we go back to here. I don't seem to have done it yet. Save and show. And there you are, you can see it's animating. Jump to navigation. I think that's just a little bit too complex, so uh, we close that. Now we go to tree and reduce the number of no, number of levels a bit. So if you find it's a little bit slow, let's go down to say six. And then I'll put it, save and show, and they've got a nice animated tree. I jump to viewpoint, close up. So the idea behind this is that you could take this tree and you could then put it in, in, in a, wait a minute, what have I gone down, jump to viewpoint up. We could take this tree and then uh, we could put that into a 3D scene. And this goes back from the from the days of VRML. Everybody thought, not everybody, a lot of people thought that VRML was going to be the next big thing after HTML. And they thought that by now we would have all our all our web pages, we would probably be browsing them in 3D. But that hasn't happened, and web pages are still in 2D. And, and this format, which was designed for basically 3D web pages, that has become a little bit archaic, and there are not many programs that support it nowadays. So if but if you in order to show it, then you need to have a if you install this program, View 3D Scene, I was very pleased to find this a really rather well-featured program that does show it. And I have a link on the download page. Now, if you want to go to File and then Save as X3D, that's the more recent format. And modern programs are more likely to be able to load it as a 3D uh, thing if you save it as X3D. And then you can open it in a, in a more modern program. So sometime maybe I'll add an X3D output to virtual flower, but it's easy enough to convert it. So, so you know, you could just save it as VML, show it in View 3D Scene, convert it to X3D, and you'll get it into any modern 3D program. I just put Maya and all these other ones. They'll all, all support X3D. I think View 3D Scene, does it have other exports? It just, yeah, just X3D and first codings of X3D. But once you've got in that, you can convert it to other formats if necessary. So that's virtual flower, and it can do a lot more than just trees. For one thing, it can it, you can add things to this tree. So if I go up there and then add leaves, flowers, etc., to the tree, if I click there, now you see this is the, the leaves are coming in pairs like that. So I can substitute for each one. So the sheet of flowers are just these flat things. There's the Objects for 3D flowers, or if I click there, then you actually replace a flower for the actual for the actual branch, and then you get this kind of trailing flower effect. But if I click back again, it goes to a tree. So you can do that as well. And let's go to VML, output tree, etc. Save and show, and we'll get our flowers in the. And there we are. There's our, there's our flowering tree. So if you go to file, and then you can also save as a forest and as an avenue, and you can randomize the forest. I'll, I'll just show you those, but I won't actually. We'll need to we'll do something a little bit simpler for that. Yeah, let's let's just show you that file tree. But you want it rather simpler for that. If you, since you're showing lots of them, let's do something like that. And VML tree output, and now let's save it as a 
a forest. It's just a little copse actually, you could make it a big forest, but you set the number of trees, it's only four trees by four. And then if we go and click here and then to randomize, then you can randomize the orientation and the tree sizes. And then you go to the output, and now if we do save and show, and then go over to the other program, then we should see a little, it hasn't done it yet. There we are. And there you can see from above there's a little forest of, forest of these flowering tree things. So uh, yeah, I don't think I explained. Do you see how it's got a blue sky above and it's got this green below? And obviously the trees aren't sitting on anything. So this is just a very basic scene that I did, which has basically got blue to infinity above and green to infinity below, and it's fading in the distance. And so this just gives you a preliminary idea of what it would be like. But the idea was, would be that you would put it into a proper scene of some sort that you made in some other program. And you have these basic scenes here that you can put it into. So I have, for instance, Desert with Oasis, uh, Island with Lake. I think that's actually got some, some stuff in it. So I do save and show them. And you can actually see that they are actually on top of something. You see? They're actually on top of this very, very basic, simple scene that I've made. But you can make all sorts of complex scenes in VRML if you really get into it. Or you can just import it into some other scene made for some other program in, in X3D or whatever other format you're using. Anyway, so now let's look at the various other kinds of examples we've got up here. So we've got lots of examples of what you can do. File, then examples, and this is where you find all the examples. And so you've got uh, this, these aerobatic shapes. Now it's a little bit flickery in, in, the, uh, in the 3D engine that I made, but that, that looks absolutely fine if we go and then output it. Uh, no, that's, that's just to show because we don't need to output. I could do, if you want to save it as a new file, you go to file and save as, or you can do save as there. And you could save a new file name. This is one that's already there, so we can just click show. And there we are, and there it is. And then again, what are these warnings? Oh yes. It, it should be, I should have fixed that, I meant to fix that, I don't know if I have. Let's go to output options, uppercase fog, oh right, okay. I, 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 I won't bother going to that, but there's a, uh, this is something I'm still working on, I'll, I'll upload this a bit later today. And those warnings about, about some, some little detail there, it's not really worth bothering you with it. So anyway, there are, there's our thingy, and you can again jump to viewpoint, and from a close up. So uh, there are lots of examples like that, and you can you can do. So and so what's happening there? The way it, what's this happening there? Remember, we showed the idea of tree rustling and swaying and everything. Well, here. I've put, I've put um, these shapes onto the branches of the tree, but then I've hidden the branches, so you can't see them. So you just see the movement of basically the flowers and the leaves at the heads of the trees, and then I've sort of crossed them up together so they actually intersect with each other. So that's actually what's happening there. So that's basically a tree without any branches or, or stalks. It's just the flowers which have been replaced by geometrical shapes. And then, you know, there's just lots and lots of examples here you can try. This shows lots of, this again is a similar idea. If I go to, 
an output. Um, I'll stop here and, and, and talk a little bit about what you flower in, in, in the next, in, in another video segment. It's a bit of a, a, a noise coming from somewhere. And I just have something in my computer, I don't know if it's because it's heating up or something. You know, I'm just going to stop this and, go and find out where's quick time player. Oh yes, I'll just show you quick time player here. This is what I'm actually using when I'm doing a screen recording there. I'll just stop the recording. But you can use this for recording videos in the other programs.